We're very fortunate. We um, have Professor Janet Hemingway from the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine who will be chairing the questions and comments. We also have a, a guest who's uh, come from the National Institute of Parasitology in China who will be joining um, this panel discussion. If I can see Dr. Li. Hello <laughs> and welcome. Okay, um, we've obviously got a fairly short time frame uh, for questions with the panel, but have I got burning questions from the audience? We must have some out there. Thanks very much. Uh, Russell Stoddard, Liverpool School, Trouble Commission. Question about the uh, genetic release. Do you find it might be more effective or less effective in certain geographic areas depending on the genetic structure? of the host population you're trying to manipulate in terms of, you know, are all male mosquitoes as equally attracted to females in different geographic locations? I think it's too early to tell in terms of the, the amount of studies we've done in different areas. One thing I would say, though, is Avisa has moved around the world relatively recently. So as far as a, a species, globally, it's quite uh, homogeneous. Um, and the studies that have been done is, is bringing uh, strains from different laboratories, so or well, different regions into laboratory and doing mating studies. And those have shown no differences between one area and the other area. And I think the other thing we have done in the countries we have worked in um, is take the local strains and, and do mating competitiveness studies with, with our uh, strain. And we've not found any differences from country to country. So. From, from that perspective, I haven't detected any, any sort of differences so far. I had another hand up. Yep. You mentioned briefly uh, about push-pull ways of uh, doing it and saying you didn't, you didn't think there was much going on. I mean, are you, you presumably are aware of um, the stuff on Tetsifly, which and that technology has been used a lot. But the problems there have been more um, getting people to put the traps out and maintaining that. I don't know if you have any comment on whether that sort of problem would happen in other systems. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure it would. I think there are a lot of, um, a lot of obstacles to, to overcome, as there are with any vector control in, intervention. Um, I mean, we were speaking about this earlier in, in the workshop as well. So some studies have been done to look at the acceptability of, of, of doing that and, and come out quite positive, actually. Um, but, it, but it is an issue, absolutely. So I think the key really is that you know, we can, we, can, we can design all sorts of fancy pants, uh, traps and repellents and all sorts of things, but what's going to work it has to be the simplest of technologies, the cheapest, the ones that are going to run for a long time um, without having to be maintained and positioned, you know, and, and not intrusive as well. Um, and we're not there yet with, with that sort of thing. I think we're at the point at which we can possibly demonstrate proof of principle with this sort of technology. But in terms of putting, of deploying something properly, um, with traps and with repellents, then I, I don't think we're there personally. I mean, I know, for example, Biogents, uh, one of the companies has made great leaps towards uh, developing simple traps, some that don't require electricity and that sort of thing. Um, but I think there's still a, a bit of work to do, certainly to demonstrate that that's, that's going to be um, useful and, and usable in, in that sort of scenario. I, I think the issue, as far as the tricks are concerned, it wasn't that it didn't work to a degree or that it wasn't acceptable. It was keeping it going once the problem had, had perceived gone. to have gone. Yeah. And then how, you, you've got, you can't just sure. stop. I mean, I, I don't know with mosquitoes whether we'd ever get to that position. I mean, obviously, you know, te with tetsi flies reproductive rate, it's much easier to eliminate them from a particular area. And with mosquitoes, I mean, well, perhaps with uh, genetic con modification, you might be able to do that with a certain species. But um, I think the problem will always be there and the biting nuisance will always be there and therefore the, hopefully there would be a, an incentive to, to carry on. I mean, people do this anyway. You know, you, you go out to, to, to um, local townships in various parts of the world and people are in some places dousing their floors with petroleum and uh, doing other things like that. Just, you know, very sort of traditional methods, um, burning neem leaves, that sort of thing. So people are, are used to doing these sorts of things to keep, keep these biting things away from them. Yeah. Have I got other questions in the audience? Um, I had two questions. One for Oxitec. Um, maybe I missed it in the presentation. I was wondering what method you use to separate the males from the females. Sure. 
it's uh, basically size separation, so the female pupae are larger than the males. So we've got a very efficient sort of, yeah, size, mechanical size separation system to do that. Okay, thanks. And then, uh, James, um, I was wondering if you'd done any, if you'd looked into um, the efficacy of repellents on resistant mosquito strains and whether there are any differences in responses compared to susceptible strains. And I'm particularly thinking about volatile pyrethroids where you have um, pyrethroid resistance and if there's any, if the, if the target site is different for the um, volatile pyrethroids or um, I was wondering if you'd done any work on that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an obvious sort of next step, isn't it? And um, something that I very much like to look at. We, I don't have funding to do that, unfortunately, so we haven't um, been able to do that. I know there are some guys at Liverpool School who are looking into that at the minute. We have done some work on uh, permethrin. Um, so one of the issues that we have in Thailand, for example, with our trial on impregnated clothing is that in the area there, there is some resistance. And um, so we obviously wanted to test the clothing against resistant mosquitoes. And what we did find was that um, those that were resistant are just as much repelled, even though they'll survive, survive better, they're just as much repelled as uh, the susceptible mosquitoes, um, which is encouraging. And in fact, what we also find is that when you have, a, for example, a uniform which is perhaps you know, short sleeves, um, mosquitoes that are susceptible will... They, they might land on the clothing, then they'll, 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 they'll take off very quickly and they'll go onto the skin and they'll bite. The ones that seem to be resist, or the ones that are resistant, seem to land on the clothing and stay there because they're not affected as much by it and they can't then bite through the clothing. And so you actually get less bites um, with the resistant mosquitoes, which is kind of counterintuitive in a way. But there's lots of things that we need to understand about the mechanisms involved and we don't quite understand um, enough about that. I just had one, one more thing, just a quick comment to uh, Dr. Rollinson. Uh, thanks very much for your presentation on schistosomiasis. And I, was, um, I, I agree with you. I think we need to do a, a rebranding uh, to get the, the vector control community uh, um, uh, more clued up on the idea that snails are real vectors and, and need to be addressed as such. Thank you. Any more questions from the audience? Um, I guess I'm, I'm going to take Chairman's prerogative and, and ask a question from up here. Um, and I'm, I'm delighted to see that one of our, uh, our customers, if you like, from the IVCC is now standing up and saying this is a great thing rather than me having to do it um, as the uh, uh, former CEO of the IVCC. So clearly it's done its job in getting new products through to market. Um, but there's a price sensitivity once you get to market um, from that market. And how do you see... Um, the community as a whole being able to get over that pyrethroids are the cheapest thing we can put in there so that we're going to do that independent of what might work sensibly by way of, uh, of resistance management. Yeah, well that's um, going to be covered in my next presentation, actually. <laughs> yes, it, it's, it's a real dilemma, um, particularly if the IVCC is successful in meeting its goal of three new active ingredients. Um, how do we successful, how do we make use of those in resistance management programs without being anti-competitive? And so that's going to be a, a real issue. And the, the pricing obviously comes in it as well. I, I think it's very, very unlikely we'll, we'll come up with chemistry that is in the same price range as the pyrethroids are now. Um, the, the, the reason they're such a slow price is because of the extensive use in agriculture and the generic manufacture of, of many of them. I think it is very unlikely we could ever achieve that, that, this, that level of pricing. And so there, is, there will be a, a number of knock-on effects from that, and how do we get them into the market at a, at a, at a price that people can afford? Um, and how can we then engage in resistance management to, prevent, to prolong their to, uh, longevity in the, in the marketplace without getting into the issues of anti-competition, et cetera? So it's, it's, it's a challenge, yes. And I, I'm not, being a scientist and not a commercial person, I don't feel particularly uh, qualified to actually try and provide a, an answer for that. <laughs> Any more questions from the audience? I've got one. Simon. Just developing on that, um, so one of David's um, points was that the, uh, the, I, I wondered how much um, you think might be available in your back catalogue regarding molluscicides. And what part of that um, one billion is, um, could be related to schistosomiasis? I mean, what, what is the, have you done a similar kind of analysis on that as to what uh, part of 
anyone's um, portfolio that uh, a Mollusca side might be, and, and comment on the prospects for it from your perspective. Right, I think Mollusca sides features very low on our horizons, and I suspect, I think Bayer are probably the lead company in Mollusca sides, and I, I suspect it probably features quite low on their horizons as well. Um, that said, we used to, in the days of ICI, research this area, and so I suspect in the back catalogue there are some very interesting things to, to look at. However, the, when you mix, think, um, when you hear adding chemistry to water, we naturally shirk a little bit because the, 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 um, well, the, the presentation highlighted some of the issues with that. Trying to get selectivity between mollusks and fish, for example, and any of the other arthropods in the water is a, a major challenge. And then you add on top of that the um, human safety issues in people drinking that water. It's, uh, it's territory where people will tend to steer away from. They're, they're, it's, uh, it, it's, it's very, nevertheless, very interesting. And I did take note of that, you know, it's an, it, it, if you could have a high throughput screen, it would certainly be worth trying to get some kind of project. Um, up and running there, the, but the actual delivery of that into the marketplace is a thing that makes sort of companies like us um, worry because you've got so many factors there that are, um, are issues elsewhere in, in the world and for, our, you know, for, for agricultural chemistry. So it's, it's, it doesn't look attractive, but um, that, that said, scientifically very interesting. It, sorry. I was just wondering, we're very fortunate to have Dr. Lee from China here, and China have made great steps forward with schistomyces control. Dr. Lee, would you like to just say something about snail control in, in China? Yeah. In China, the snail control is the, the, the key measure of this uh, cytosomyces control, and uh, we, we, we often use the, usually use the, the Malasco society to, to, the, to the snail control. So, uh, for many years, uh, and I um, agree with the uh, doctor. The, what he said, the, the challenge is uh, for us is to uh, the toxic uh, for the uh, other animals in the water, such as uh, fish, and uh, because this 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 uh, this is what what we worried about for uh, often. Uh, Often uh, uh, make, make us uh, the economic disputes in China. So I think uh, the innovation uh, for snail control is needed much not more. So, yeah. Okay. It may be worth just a quick comment as well that I think we were very fortunate when we were looking for new insecticides um, that the standard screens that industry had been doing for the last 30 years included screening against Aedes aegypti, even though they weren't actually um, producing new insecticides for the vector market. <clears throat> and so what we didn't have to do was go back and screen hundreds of millions of compounds. We could actually go back to the company's records and say which of these compounds that they've screened over the last 30 years actually killed mosquitoes. And that was our starting point. You don't have that sifting um, for the Molusky sides because there's no equivalent screen in the standard industrial screen that would have allowed you to, to take that kind of shortcut. Any other comments or is everybody dying for lunch? I know we've uh, um, overshot our mark. I've got one more question before lunch then. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say on back to Molusky siding, um, I work with uh, David at the museum. Um, and I think one of the problems is probably that mosquitoes are a darn sight more irritating than snails. And maybe that's another reason why people don't investigate it, because there's no bite. They just are more passive. I don't know if anyone wants that. <laughs> it's just a, just a point. The, in terms of schistomyosis, we've not, it's never been on our horizons at all, really. I think slugs, the nearest thing we've got to um, in, that, in that area. Um, the, again, it, it's driven by market size. Um, the, the agricultural market for, uh, and in uh, amenity uh, markets for uh, mollusk control in terms of slugs is, 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 are quite great. But... Um, we, we've never, I've certainly, I've, I've made a note actually to have a look through our archives and see if we haven't done, done any work on um, 
you know, on snails, but I, I don't think we have. It's just not on the horizon at all. And probably, yeah, maybe for that reason as well, they aren't irritating and they're not, vis they're not visual, it's not seen. And also, it's the, lo the geographical location as well. With that, I think I need to draw the session to a close. Um, and I think pass over to our hosts who are going to tell you where we're going for lunch and the time that they want us back here. Thank you very much.